We'll uh, call to order the Board of Zoning Appeals. Would you please stand for the pledge? Joe Machado, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. All roll, please. Gary Farley. Here. Veronica Buchanan. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. Michael Rather. Here. Jared Barrett. Here. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. We have a full house tonight. We, you have the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? Have a motion that be approved. I'll second it. Have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed like say. Minutes are approved. In looking at our agenda tonight, just in case there's anyone here interested in these uh, items, the renewed life ministry outreach has been withdrawn. The SCI tower has been deferred. So those two items will not be on our agenda tonight. The uh, first uh, <clears throat> Item on our agenda then will be the Philippe Cruz, which is uh, requesting an accessory dwelling. What do you have on that, please? Okay. Oh, there we go. Thank you. 2017-42, filed by Philippe Cruz, involves the property located at 307 Fairfax Drive. They are seeking special exception approval for an accessory dwelling unit that does not meet the minimum lot size requirements for ADUs involving a property located in the RM medium density residential zone. This is the applicant's property. It's located on the corner of Fairfax Drive and Harris. And the applicant would like to convert the existing detached structure that's located on the side of the property into a small living unit to be used by guests and family um, on special occasions. The property measures less than one acre and that is why the applicant is here before you because he does not have the one acre minimum required. It's a 0.37 acre property. We did not receive any phone calls regarding this property property or this request. Uh, this is the principal structure that the applicant resides in and this is the existing structure that will be used for the accessory dwelling unit. Uh, the photos of the surrounding area of the neighborhood and then this is appro we're approaching a side view of the existing structure that will be used. Uh, the applicant will be required to get the appropriate permits to complete if approved, and it will be inspected by the uh, building department before it can be occupied as a single family dwelling. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? Would you come around, please, to the podium? No, come on, come on around to this. Okay. If you'll give us your name and any additional information on your request. Yes, sir. My name is Felipe Cruz, and I need to express the reason why the request. Yes, sir. Uh, good, after, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, mainly, uh, I had the privilege to purchase this home. It was a blessing, and the main reason uh, the detached garage <clears throat> also it, it was a garage at one point it was a shop used by the prior owners i'm not exactly i don't exactly know what kind of shop they used to have carpentry or but originally <clears throat> my wife and i decided because my wife likes to do arts and crafts so me too so we were going to use it for arts and craft but um 
oh, someone, one of our neighbors called that I was walking on the area without no permit, I suppose, I don't know. But I did uh, <clears throat> get a letter and I went and see the uh, coding department and Mr. Mark Rosa, or, uh, Russell, he is the uh, building uh, code inspector. I spoke with him, he came and inspected the property and he told me what I needed to do. He, he told me, in your property, you are allowed to do whatever you want as long as you get the right permits and get, uh, you know, per, uh, approved after the permits and whatever work that you're doing. <clears throat> Eventually, <clears throat> Uh, he also counseled me. He walked me through all these steps <clears throat> of what, how to do. He'd been twice uh, to inspect. And also in the uh, same permit, I included uh, expanding my front porch, which is small, which I'm working on, and my back deck, expanding it. It's all in the property, uh, in the permit and I'm working on it. So he told me after I, this hearing, then, then I can call him when everything is finished. Uh, he, he, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ogle, the, uh, the electrical inspector, also I paid the fee, he came, he, he approved it. All the plumbing, all the work, all everything that, was, that has been done there, I have done myself, being a handyman, it's been approved by the coast inspector, Mr. Mark Russell. The reason is the main thing, <clears throat> Ms. Danielle Counter is also one of the uh, uh, ladies, very, she's very help, helpful. She uh, walked me also through all this paperwork and requesting this permit. <clears throat> the original reason why I really wanted to turn this into a family unit is because I have a lot of family who visit from Florida, from New York, so for weekends, you know. Uh, the, but the main thing, honestly, is because my handicapped sister, who's elderly, and my brother-in-law, they are my parents since I've been an orphan since I was two. They took care of me. <clears throat> they gave me the example. They've been devoted Christian for their life and responsible citizens. They raised me and my siblings being orphans. <clears throat> now he's battling cancer. He's almost 80 years old. My sister also is... Uh, we need to slow down here a little bit. You're giving us more information than we need. Okay. Let's, so, uh, let's uh, see if we have any questions. Jerry, do you have one? Only family would stay there. Yes, only my, my sister who's handicapped and my brother-in-law, <clears throat> he is in his last days battling cancer. She's also in her last day battling diabetes. I'm just trying to pay back what they did for me and my siblings, have them there so we can watch over them to the medical uh, appointments, take them to the medical appointments, and help them with all their health issues in the last days. That is uh, honestly and the truth, the reason why I really want to have it turn into a family unit. What would ha what what will happen to the apartment after that time? That'll be only used for my wife and I for a <clears throat> shop, for, you know, for uh, arts and craft. Or unless a family member comes to visit for weekends, like from New York or Florida, we let them there, there stay a weekend or for the weekend. It will not be for rental. No, sir. I do not rent my property. I like my privacy. It's not for profit or rental. That is the honest truth. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> In your house, the main dwelling, yes, sir. how many folks live in that house that drive vehicles? Right now it's only my wife and I. We are helping my, her son and my, her son and her, his wife and children are staying with us, but they'll be moving to their apartment tomorrow, okay. their own apartment. We help them also get on their feet. They came from Alabama, homeless. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I got a comment. I see that you're a veteran. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you veteran. for your service. You're welcome. Sir. It was an honor to serve. I wish I could do it all over again, but they won't let me. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. You may be seated. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll open calling. this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. If you'll come forward, give us your name and share the information. You have three minutes. My name is Doug Tolston. I live in 303, the property just west of this. Uh, Felipe has done a great job of putting this stuff together. I'm not, I live right next door. We talk all the time. My concern is that if we allow this variance, if anything happens, I know there's been talk about a roadway going through from Brent Mead in the future and a whole bunch of different things. I've been to hearings over this and you know that's a long way down the road. 
I know they're still building over there in front of Brent Mead. And there's going to be things to happen. My thing is, if you're going to allow him to do this, you need to make this a zoning where people can, if they have existing structures, to be allowed to do that. I have an existing structure. I'm not talking about doing this instantly. I have a basement apartment. I have a space for my family when they come to visit. This place came with a 350 square foot hand dug basement. So I know and I understand what he's doing, but if his property values are allowed to increase and mine aren't because of this variance, I think it's very unfair. Okay, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Any questions? Let me remind you, uh, when you have a variance, there are requirements that you have to comply with from the time you have it, <coughs> so on. And it, if you change the zoning, you have no uh, way of really monitoring that. But in a variance, you do have a better way of doing it. So I, I just want to make that clear to you about these variances. They don't go on forever, and it doesn't mean somebody next door to you can go ahead and get it because, or get a change because of the variance that you have here. So they, they're not depending on each other. So it does give you some uh, uh, better protection, put it that way. Uh, anyone else? If you'll come forward, please. <coughs> Um, my name is Kathy Bradshaw, and I own um, 3210 Harris, which is the house up in the very far right, and then 3206. I'm a co-owner with my three other siblings since my mother just passed away the end of August. So we all also own that house. And I'm against the special exception, and the reason why is because the road is very narrow, there's only room for one car to come through. It's not enough for two to come and go. His driveway comes out and it adjoins two other driveways, which he comes down a hill, which has also uh, caused some problems with um, accidents almost happening there. And then, of course, everyone in the city at the, at the other end of Memorial, there's um, apartments, there's... Um, uh, duplexes, there's townhomes, there's a trailer park, there's not efficient parking up through there and I think it's just going to start bottlenecking down into the subdivision where there, and a lot of people have garages and outhouses and things that could be converted and then pretty soon if this is going to be an exception then everyone will be wanting to do that. And um, of course the septic tanks, my other concern because they're single dwelling septic tanks and I know uh, Mr. Cruz was talking about his family, but he has a three bedroom house and he's saying that it's just him and his wife. So um, I was a little concerned about that also. Um, my other concern is, um, um, you know, when you start making special exceptions, it becomes expectations, you know, for other people to want to have rental property. And I know he's saying he don't want to rent it, but there's no way for us to know if he's renting it or not or if his family's living there. And I think that has um, a devalue effect on all of our property there. So I hope you do not approve this exception, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else? Come around, please. My name's Billy Conley. I'm co-owner of the house across from him with my other siblings, my sister. And I just don't approve of this. I, like she said, the septic tank with excess to it, the devaluation of property. That corner ice is over. We have people coming and making shortcuts through there now, trying to get to Compton off of Memorial. If if you apply more places, then you're going to have 
more impact of transportation going up and down. And I've almost been hit twice. And I mean, I've lived there growing up. We, could, we went by what they said, and septic tanks will not hold that many people. They're that little. My mother's had to have hers drained twice and fixed, and several other people have. And I just think it's a bad impact, and it's going to lower the value of all of our homes there. Well, that may be a, a we don't deal with the septic tanks. They, they have to get a septic tank permit, okay? So uh, they're not going to approve this if the septic tank won't handle the number of people. So you don't have to worry about that. That'd be yeah, separate. But the other thing is if down the line more people move in there, there's more cars there, which, like I said, in that bend in the, in the winter, ice is over. And you have a car sitting on the side of the road, it's going to be hit. I mean, we were raised there. You can't, it, that's a bad hill there. You go around and it goes back up another hill. And they all, this one always ices over due to the fact of the trees there. And I'm just thinking there's not enough parking in his yard to keep cars off of the road and make it safe for the kids around there and any other car that goes through there. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. Anyone else? We'll close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. Mr. Chairman, the proper avenues for this application being uh, submitted, I move for approval. I have a motion to be approved. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Just remind everyone, it does meet the codes and requirements. Once it does that, folks, uh, and our staff has looked at it very carefully as far as uh, this is concerned and it seems to uh, meet those requirements. Call roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Michael Rather? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. It is approved. The next item is a request by Carolyn Miller, who is requesting catering service at our home. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2017-43, filed by Carolyn Miller, involves the property located at 6902 Ridley Earp Road. It's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a major home-based business involving a catering service upon the property located in the RM Medium Density Residential Zoning District. It's a large property measuring 105 acres. And the applicant currently has a location for their catering business in Manchester that um, they will be closing. And she would like to relocate uh, the catering business to her home in one of the existing structures. And the structure on the property that she would like to use measures over 500 square feet. And so uh, she is appearing before you for special exception approval. This is the, we posted a sign on the property and the property is a farm and that's the farm sign. It's not a, a sign associated with the business. The applicant does not propose to install a sign for the catering business. These are pictures of the surrounding area. And as you can barely see the structures, uh, they're kind of behind, hidden behind the trees, but she will operate out of one of the existing structures. And the aerial kind of gives us a better idea as to the location of the structure. And it's a 3,700 square foot structure. So that's, she's probably not going to use the entire 3,700 square feet. But because the area that's dedicated to the business measures greater than uh, 500 square feet, uh, she, her business requires special exception approval. And we did not receive um, any phone calls uh, in opposition to this request. And staff recommends approval. And that concludes our presentation. There. Okay. Uh, Ms. Miller, you, do you want to come around? Do 
you would just give us your name and any additional information you want to share with the board. I'm Carolyn Miller. I own property and operate out of Coffee County. I have a commercial kitchen there. We have two structures there that we use for our venues. So we both have, both those are for sale. So if they sell, I would like to have another commercial kitchen and close to home would be nice. Any questions? No, <laughs> but we can have some. <laughs> Most I, of you have eaten my food anyway, I think. <laughs> this, this lady, you talk about a, a catering, a good food. And I asked her for her uh, card, and she didn't have any extra. I thought maybe she could pass some out here. <laughs> but if you ever need it, it's a reasonable price, and the food is very creative. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. A motion to be approved. Second. Have a second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Veronica Buchanan. Yes. Joe Michotto. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Michael Rather. Yes. Jared Barrett. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. It is approved. The next item is a request by Marishan and uh, Welcome, who is requesting a mini storage business. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2017-44, uh, filed by Heather Merchinson and Josh Welcome, involves a property located along Miller Road, and it's a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a mini storage business upon a property located in the EAC, Employment Activity Center Zoning District. And this is the site. It's a vacant, undeveloped site at this time. Uh, the applicant proposes to uh, develop the property as a mixture of commercial and uh, personal storage uses. The commercial portion of the development will not require any special exceptions. However, the mini storage aspect will, uh, as it is listed as a special exception in the EAC zoning district. The, any development of the site will have to go through site plan review process and be um, determined uh, compliant with all of our development regulations as well as the utility providers. Uh, a, month, a year ago, I believe, uh, the property at, on Long Sledge Road at the end of Miller Road uh, was approved for the EAC zoning district and also received special exception approval for a mini storage. That's actually under construction now. And um, you have a mixture of industrial uses and commercial uses in this employment activity center. It's the Epps Mill Interchange along um, I-24. So this is the site and surrounding areas. The vegetation that exists prevents me from getting really good photos, but you can tell from the aerial what it looks like. This is the conceptual plan that was provided by the applicant. It is subject to change as a result of site plan review, but involves some off-street parking along the front, some commercial uses along um, between the off-street parking and the mini storage use towards the back of the property. And uh, we received several informational calls regarding this request, but no one indicated opposition or in favor. And that concludes our presentation. If we have anyone here representing this request, if you'll come around, please. Give us your name and any additional information. You want my to name is Heather Merkison, and that's my dream you just saw. Um, it's going to be self storage, will be more um, geared toward RV and um, storage like that. That's it. Any questions? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Entertain a motion on it. Public, uh, hearing. public hearing. I'm sorry. You know, public hearing on this. If you'll come around, please.
My name is Mike Harris. I live on Sledge Road. Um, I don't have any opposition to it. I apologize. I didn't know anything about the other one on, uh, it's actually Miller Road. Everybody calls it Sledge, but it's Miller. The other mini storage. The only concern that I have is, is it going to be a gated access? That's the only concern that I have. If it's not gated, I feel like there's going to be, because we're right off the interstate, there's a lot of uh, mischief that could happen there, more than what is happening there already. So if it was gated, maybe, uh, you know, with a passcode, I don't know if the one on um, Miller around the corner, if, if that one was, I know it was approved, but I don't know if that was going to be a gated access as well. I don't know. That's, that's really the only concern I have. Well, I'm looking at the conceptual site plan. I'm not seeing a gate. It could have been in the written portion of the application, but I'm um, looking at the applicant. Do you, do you know if it will be gated? Pardon? Oh, okay. So a lot of the development costs are being dedicated to the installation of the gate. So. Any, any other questions? Still have the public hearing. Anyone else wants to speak? Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion on it? Mr. Chairman, I, um, considering this application meets the general requirements for a special exception, all of them, I move to approve. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Michael Rather? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. It is approved. The next item is a request by William Barrett, who is requesting a single wide residence. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2017-45 involves the property located at 3544 West Jefferson Pike. The application is filed by the property owner, William A. Barrett, and it's a request for special exception approval for the placement of a single wide residence on a track less than five acres. Uh, the property is located in the RM zoning district. And this is the site. Uh, there is a small apartment located towards the back of this property and an older home that's located towards the front and the applicant uh, had come into our office uh, with several different scenarios and we've uh, explained to the applicant what was necessary for each scenario that was um, being pursued and sometime in April the applicant came in and indicated that they were going to remove the existing single wide and replace the existing single wide in the same exact location on the property um, and obtained a permit. And as the development of, or the after the single wide was brought onto the property, it was discovered by building codes that it was not uh, a single wide that was being removed from the property and it's definitely not in the same location on the property. And they were in, advised to stop work and to come in to speak with the building official as well as Doug to determine a course of action to obtain zoning compliance. The applicant's intentions are to ultimately plat the property into three parcels, one containing the single wide, uh, one containing the existing home and then having an additional building site and that the applicant's intentions that were noted dictated the process for what she's going through tonight and that's why we're asking for a single wide on less than five acres instead of an accessory dwelling unit involving a mobile home the applicant does not live on the property but indicated that all of the work and all the uh the occupants of the property are family members. Now this is the structure that was being referred to as a single wide. It's not a single wide, it's a, an, an existing structure that was either converted or placed on the property. It's fixed to the ground. But that would have been, if it was a single wide, it would have to have been removed. It's a very complicated <laughs> scenario. But the applicant is here tonight seeking approval for the single wide on less than five acres. Staff has uh, does not recommend approval or denial. However, if the board chooses to approve this uh, 
application. Uh, its approval should be contingent upon the applicant proceeding with the platting process and getting the plat recorded before they can uh, continue with the installation of the single white on the property. It's yet to be determined whether or not the property itself can support the three separate building sites. We have received calls in opposition to this request and we posted a sign on the property. So you can see the existing home. Uh, this is what the applicant provided as a site plan. And um, that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this? If you'll come around, please. My name is uh, William Barrett and I own this property at 3544 West Jefferson Pike. I did get a preliminary um, subdivision plat of that property yesterday. So I do have it here. Um, I have had it soil tested. Uh, the little home already has its own existing septic tank there. Um, I've done everything that was asked of me to do. Um, I have a daughter, stepdaughter that's going to be moving in. And the old existing home, I have another stepdaughter, family member living there. There are all of this family are adopted. They all veterans. Uh, my hope is someday there's a little seven-year-old granddaughter that has nothing. Daddy's no good. Another story, but to leave her this plot of land where this mobile home is. She's seven years old. And it's going to be beyond my lifetime. Uh, that's what the plan is to do with it. Did you, uh, when you first started out with this, did you tell the planning staff that you were replacing a one with this? They Either me, yes or no. I've got a paper here where they had told me if I remove the little home, they even give me a permit. Um, you understand that, but um, you, did you so tell them that you were uh, replacing one? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. moving that little little home out of there and putting this one there. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions, please, Gary? Uh, Mr. Parent, um, when you had this mobile home installed, did you use a license installation company? Yes, sir. It has already been approved by the state of Tennessee. It's already uh, fixated to the ground before they ever stop. You know, before they asked me to start working on it, I did. Uh, I did replace a window that was broken, um, but there's not any more work. Uh, the electrical work, everything is ready. Is the electrical hooked up to it now? No, sir. No, I, they told me to stop, so that's where we have stopped. So is there is there a green installation decal that's? Uh, it's purple. Good? I have a, I have a copy of it. Yes, sir. Uh, can, can I see it? Yes, sir. But your, yes, sir. Your, your permit was to take one out and put one yes, in sir. the exact same location. So yes, how sir. how is it not how did that not happen? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> just, just a simple answer is fine. Yes, sir. Well be for me to get it um, forty foot from the road, out from under the electrical line, off of this property to get in compliance of what they told me it had to say, it had to be set in front of it. But, but the old one is, is not a trailer in the first place. Um, I don't know. It's been called everything. I've, it's been called everything. I don't know what it is. I bought the home two years ago. Um, there's, uh,
they give me a permit for it as it being a mobile home. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do with it. If it, uh, Any other questions? Uh, Joe? Oh, well, are you going to remove the existing home behind it? Uh, yes, sir. The only reason it's not done deal now is that uh, I had to stop. I had to stop the vinyl guy. The little home's going to look like the little white home. I'm going to vinyl it up. You're not removing. No, sir. The little. I'm going to make the mobile home look like the little white home that we're removing. It's going to be removed. The white home will be gone. Okay. Michael. Mr. Barrett, you, you have to understand, I want you to understand something. Yes, that, sir. Um, staff was led to believe, and I know this is already brought up two or three times, that there was a mobile home on that property at the time that they had that discussion with you. When you bought that property, did you look at that little white house as, hey, I've got a mobile home back here? No, sir. It's been okay. my intention right. the whole time well, to. Wait, wait a minute. That answered that question. I want you, what I want you to understand is that builders do not go on to property and build a bunch of houses and then go and try to get them get the the development platted, <coughs> and approved, and all that kind of stuff. They get they get all that done first. So. My problem is we don't need to, I'm of the opinion that this doesn't need to move forward, this needs to move backwards. In other words, we've gone to a point where where we're at needs, we need to back up. Because if your intent, and I've had a bunch of intents in my life that never happened. Yep. And, and so with the, with the issue about hey, I've got a single wide that I want to replace with another single wide, then it makes me question the intents. Is that really going to happen? What's really the intent? You know, it's, it, it brings some concern. So at this point, I, I feel like the most common sense thing to do is we back up. If your intent is to divide this into three parcels, then go do that. I have done Forget that. the trailer, is that a signed plat? It's, um... Yes or no? I, it's how not, you, I you saw talking it stuff here. I don't know about. It's, so, you know, I you, saw it from you, here. you talking signed, stuff I don't know about. Unless it's signed by okay. everybody that needs yeah. to sign it, then it's yeah. not an approved plat. You yourself said it's a preliminary plat. Yeah. It's a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay? So it cost me again, lots of money. I didn't spend money on this to, and again, I'm trying to move a homeless an person into this. It's a piece of paper. You know. I agree with you. Yeah. But we're, we're getting the, I'm of the opinion we're getting the cart before the horse, and there's some neighbors out there that are going to be impacted. There are folks who travel up and down Jefferson Pike that may be impacted, so we need to back up and let you go through the platting process and let others in county government look at this and make sure everything's done the way it's supposed to because at this point there's an awful lot that's not that's been done that wasn't supposed to happen okay we've we what? need to put that to what, the side. what so, has been done that wasn't supposed so to happen i just want you to understand what my opinion is and i i think we've We've gone too far, and we need to go backwards okay. and let you carry on with whatever okay. you're in. But I, I would, I would need to you to explain to me what it is that I need to do. Well, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. I'm telling you what my opinion okay. is. If you're in, because I've done, I've done everything that's been required of me or requested of me to do. Uh, well, I'm going to answer your question. Yes, sir. All right. If your intent is to divide this into three parcels. You need to do that before you start moving property in there and saying you're replacing a single wide with a single wide, knowing good and well there wasn't a single wide there to begin with by your own admission. 
I never admitted okay. to that. Well, I said I did not know what it's been called everything. That's what I said, so don't put words in my mouth. That's oh, not that's Mr. not very Christian like there, Mr. Rather. Mr. Baird, I ask you a question. Yes, sir. That when you first bought that property, did you call that little white house mobile home and you said no? Yeah. So by your own admission, it's yeah. not a mobile home. I, well, I, I said it, I did not, not know what home. it was, is what okay. I told you it was. Okay. So I, I, You're good. Again, you need to plat it. I've done it. Let it go got through it. that process. A piece of paper that you paid some money for that's not signed is not planning a subdivision. Yes, sir. Um, so there's a process for that. I think you need to go through that process and then just take it step at a time to, to accomplish what your end goal is. And that's that's my comments, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Farley. Yeah, yes, sir. I, I'm going to have to concur with my colleague here, Bill. You, you sit there and admitted it a while ago, and you also meant to the chairman a while ago. You know, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the thing is. It's been called everything. Uh, did I call it a trailer? No, I've never called it anything. Little little house is what I've always called it. That's a matter of fact. What they wrote on here for to me to remove is the little house. Uh, I've talked to every neighbor I've got around that touches the property. Nobody's in, uh, in opposition except the guy that lives across the road. He has an existing home, mobile home, right here, right next to him. And right here where I'm putting mine is another mobile home. I'm not asking for miracles. I'm asking to put a homeless person and, and, and into Bill, a home. Bill, here's the thing. She's what, what we're asking for today yeah. is to do the right thing. I am. And, I've and, tried. And, 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 and like you said, you've got the cart before the horse. And you went into the staff and explained to them a different story than what occurred. You said that you were replacing, using the replacement of a mobile home for mobile home. That's not what's happened. No, the, the little house is still standing there, yeah. It still is. So that's the problem that this board has with. I mean, I can only speak for myself. Not I don't. I, you know, I don't know who's who's been out and examined the home to determine what it is. Yeah, we're looking at it. Yeah, if you look at it, go out there and look at it. It's vinyl all the way down to the ground, concrete on this side and concrete on this side. What's in the middle? I don't know. Over home. It, 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 yeah. That's not a mobile. That's a stick built home. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, thank right. you very much. You yes, may sir. be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like. Would you go ahead and come on around, all of you? All right. Try to hold your comments within three minutes. Okay. Please. My name is Robert Young. I live at 3555 West Jefferson Pike, which is the, the neighbor he referred to across the road. And uh, I, I can enlighten you right smart about what this was. The little white house he's talking about was built for a chicken house. In the 80s, the Mr. Thomas Short, he converted that chicken house into a little apartment-like deal. It's a three-room shotgun type thing. And uh, that, that's what that is. The, the original house, Mr. Thomas Short built it in 1946. He's 71 year old. So I can tell you a little bit about that. The septic system for the little white house he has out there, it's got a tank in it, but no lines to it. It was grandfathered in. So, and, uh, so you can't go in there and do anything. I probably know more about this property than he does. He's only owned the property two, two years and two months. I was, I've been living there 51 years across from there. And I got pictures that, that showing of the trailer, which is a lot better picture than she has there, and a picture of my home across the road there. I'd like for you to look at them and make a comparison. Uh, this thing had a lot of red flags. Mr. DeMossi told me that he came in there and told him he was replacing a modular uh, or a trailer and replacing them with this one. That's not what it was. I mean, I, like I say, I've lived there 51 years, and there's never been a, a trailer on that property that he owns. There's been a trailer on the property beside it, because Mr. Thomas Short owned both those parcels. And whenever they had his sale, they split them up, and the trailer was on the other parcel, not the one he's talking about. And for, uh, if you, we've got rulings now already for, uh, not for a single wide, be on five acres. 
So why would we think about putting a, a, a single wide trailer on where it's already got two homes on it? Now that's, that's my complaint about it. And uh, the septic system to his house, I can tell him more about his house than the septic system than he, and he knows about it. That septic system is a handmade system. It's made out of a, a brick, I mean, uh, uh, just the box, 16 inch box. That was, that was put in by Mr. Thomas Short by hand. And at the time, and the reason I know all this, my nephew owned the place and he, when he bought it. And he's lived about 23 years. And he had a problem with his septic, sink, septic system there. And he had somebody come out and he had one little short line run out there from it. And the codes made him put in 350 feet of line to accommodate that house because that's a five bedroom house. And it's not enough, it's not enough uh, air out there to substantiate another system at all. And I, I appreciate you, you voting this thing down tonight. Okay. Thank you and, very much. Thank Next. you, sir. I'm Cheryl Bolton, and I live at 3060 West Jefferson Pike. And I travel that road three or four times a day. And um, right now, it's just a total eyesore. That, the picture that's up there is very deceiving as to how far that trailer is back from the road. It is, the picture was taken right on the road and that trailer sits really close. And that is not a place for a trailer, not sitting right there next to the house in front of the little house, which I'm glad it's been um, verified that it is a little house, it's not a trailer. And um, I, at first I was wondering what it was for you know, if it has a use where somebody needs to live. And then he talks about subdividing, and I don't know how big the, acre, the acreage is, but we had 10 acres and one time got a variance for our trailer for my mother to move into because she was elderly and she'd been kicked out of several elderly homes. And one of my other neighbors, I'm sure y'all know him very well. He was going to take me to court after y'all approved it. So, and we had a septic tank, you know, we had a site, of, um, what do you call that? Perk side and everything before we even went ahead with it. And um, I just, I don't, it's not the place for it. And that's a really bad curve. They are in a really bad curve. It doesn't look that bad there, but when you're traveling it, there's a, there's a um, um, telephone pole right in that curve, and there have been more accidents in that little strip right there in the 20 years that we've lived there than, than I, I can't count on both hands. So it, it's, it's a bad place. If anybody's looking over there, they can miss the curve. And, and like I said, it just, it's an eyesore right now. And I was surprised that it was sitting there long before this meeting. So Thank you. Thank thanks. you very much. Next. Uh, my name's John Phillips. Uh, I lived in Mona area all my life, uh, except I lived in Prim Springs for about 10 years. I was his neighbor. Uh, my daddy's family's been there for over, over 100 years. My mama's family's been in that area for, before the Civil War. So we've been around for a while. So. Uh, I went to Merceboro one day and come back by. There was a trailer sitting in there. There had been no signs put up. There had been nothing. There was just a trailer pulled in there and there's cutting lignums off trees. I thought, what in the world is this? Well, that's not fair to the people living out that area. Somebody just dragged in an old trailer. Uh, it's just not right. So I went up and talked to Mossy. What I understood, he said, is an old trailer being moved out. And uh, he moved the trailer in to replace it. That's why there's no sign been put up. I said, no. Never been a trailer on that spot ever. Uh, like Mr. Young said, Mr. Short built that little shack behind there it was a chicken house. And that's what it is, a chicken house being converted. And uh, talking about that road right there, 
there's been seven people now y'all listen all of you there's been seven people killed right there that I know of in that little spot right there where it likes that little jump seven we don't need no more anything going on there the trailer next to Robert the thing burnt one time they drove another one in and we wore the poor deputies in this county out going out there so much the law so it sort of turned us against trailers period and uh, what's happened here is not fair to the people that live there and I own a piece of property there so thank y'all uh, every one of y'all thank you very much anyone else who we'll close the public hearing we have a motion on this Mr. Chairman I make a motion that we deny the request based on this building this structure is an illegal structure per our zoning ordinance okay we have a second I'll second, second it I have two seconds. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley? Yes. Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Michael Rather? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. That concludes our business. On behalf of the BZA, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Farley's loss in his mother and uh, I know it's a difficult time for him. We appreciate you being here tonight, Gary. And uh, we're uh, very saddened about your loss. Thank you. We are adjourned.